have identified that marketing is not as easy as we think. Um, we got that from um, from chapter one when we discussed um, what marketing is. Uh, when we went into chapter two and we looked at the environment in which um, we operate, and especially looked at the external factors that we have no control over, that we cannot influence, but that we have to prepare for to ensure that um, we are not caught unaware um, and that the impact that they have on our business, like the politics, the economy, technological changes, um, changes in, in, in buying patterns um, from, from consumers, consumers moving to different ge geographical areas, looking at all the different demographics, the gender and the ages, all these factors that we cannot control, how they impact. And we've looked at some of them. One of them was obviously, if you can remember from chapter two, we have our internal or our micro um, market, which basically are all those components like our strategies, our objectives, our vision, our mission, our staff, our equipment uh, that we can control. And then we have our market environment, which is where our con um, competitors find themselves in, where we find our consumers, where our suppliers, our distributors find themselves. And that we looked at um, in, um, in in a chapter um, about, or we will in future look at um, those intermediaries that we find in the uh, market um, environment. We have then also, um, or we started off by looking at the, um, the, com the consumer themselves, um, what influences their behavior, um, what process they go through to, um, to buy products. Um, and now we as marketers have put on a different hat and say, right, we know what the consumer wants. We know what our objective is, and that is primarily to satisfy the needs of the consumer. How are we going to get our message across to them? Well, before we know how to get the message, or, 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 um, and we'll deal with that in marketing communication later on in this mod, um, in this module. Before we can do that, we need to determine where they are, wh where they find themselves, because we can actually um, waste our unlimited re um, or our limited resources um, if we're not um, um, targeting specific segments efficiently. Otherwise, we're going to spread ourselves very thin. That's what we did when we did. Um, 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 when we did uh, segmentation and positioning in the previous chapter. And then, um, unfortunately for us to complete the whole process is, you can have customers. You can know where to find them. And you've segmented them according to similar characteristics and, and behaviors. But you still do not have a product to deliver. And that's where chapter eight addresses the most or one of the most prices the other one one of the most important components of the marketing mix and that's the product itself because without a product you will not have a business without a product you have nothing to offer the customers now to start off with, we always ask ourselves the question, what is a product? What qualifies as a product? Well, basically anything that, um, anything tangible or untangible, if you look at services, um, that both favorably and unfavorably um, are received by customers in exchange for something that is valuable to them usually money, um, in exchange for the product that you offer that will satisfy their needs. It's straightforward and simple. It's basically that tangible item that you see. But it doesn't have to, and it's not limited only to, uh, to tangibility or tangible items. Um, it could also be a service. And specifically because services marketing is such an intriguing and difficult um, 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 challenge that um, that marketers face. We will look at um, services marketing in in a in a separate um, chapter later on in the module. Um, but 
typical services um, just during the break now my one son is sick so I had to just find the doctor to um, to renew his, um, his script um, doctors dentists hairdressers those are all services hotels restaurants they're all in the services industry yesterday we looked at gyms um, fitness centers they're all in the services industry um, they mostly um, some of them like hotels and restaurants um, we see as hybrids because they predominantly offer a service but they have tangible products that forms part of that whole service um, delivery process uh, you, you, you cannot um, have a hairdresser without um, 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 scissors and combs and shampoos that's all products tangible products and items that you can touch and feel um, but they are all required and necessary to perform the service of cutting your hair um, the product can also be an idea um, often used by um, um, to 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 um, highlight very important aspects like the example that um, i've shown is the campaign about don't drink and drive so it's an idea that you're selling um, it's not something you can touch and feel. Um, it's an idea that brings um, a very um, important issue to um, the attention of consumers. Um, it could be a person, a musician, going to a, going to a show, um, um, a live performance of um, of, a, of a musician. Um, you listen to the music um, without that person being there. Uh, there will be no performance and but you also can't take that musician home if you want to listen to the music again you've got to download it um, a place could also be a, a, a product if you are marketing specifically a certain destination um, and yeah as I said earlier in in the first session I'm not sure if I said it to you or I said it to the previous group but Cape Town again um, was voted, I think, one of the top three um, cities in the world um, when um, regarding um, opportunities to open new businesses, uh, creativity, um, and and that was quite nice to know and to hear this morning. I haven't, I've just heard it in passing. I haven't been able to follow up and find more detail, but um, I think basically more than. 370,000 small businesses opened in 2019, just in Cape Town and the surrounding metropole, which is a staggering amount, but it just indicates that there is um, still some action, although that was obviously pre-COVID. Um, but yes, you can um, um, you can sell um, a, a place, an area. Cape Town is sold, and Cape Town I know is one of the most popular destinations on the list of people traveling. Um, on a lot of people's bucket lists um, it's different to different individuals from different countries but um, yeah um, a product can also be um, can also be a place that you visit um, and then very often I think from examples that I've used um, so far um, a combination of these um, is usually um, present in most products or most most items that qualify as 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 a product right products have different levels the different levels and let's use the example that they've used in your textbook because then figure 8.1 is is more um relevant to you um they've used the example of and and I would like you to also maybe share a different example um, just to make sure that we understand the concept when I'm done with this. But the different levels that you find a product on is that they, firstly, we have um, the core benefit level. The core benefit level is basically um, what the product is or does, sorry. The core benefit that you as the consumer will get from buying that product. If it's a car, that would be the basic product. That's the basic or generic product. That's the next level. If it's a car, your core benefit that you receive is that you'll have independence. Um, you'll have private um, transport. You don't have to rely on, on, on public transport, unreliable uh, public transport anymore. That's the benefits that you receive from having a car, from buying a car. 
where the car is the basic or generic product, the item that you are buying. Your expected product level is basically everything that the car needs to have to function properly. The wheels need to turn. The engine needs to start. Those are all aspects that you expect a car to offer you. That's why it's on the expected product level. That's what you expect the product to do for you. The augmented component or level, which is um, level four, is anything else that is added additionally, like, for instance, warranties or air conditioning or a tow bar or electric windows, anything that's not standard in the, um, in, in, in the product itself. Um, is categorized as augmented additions to um, to this particular corp um, um, basic product. And then you have your potential product level, basically everything that can still, where the, where the vehicle can still, where a car can still improve itself, what they add in addition to um, um, to the basic function that, that a vehicle performs. Maybe in future flying cars, um, we already have electric vehicles. We already have vehicles that's operated without drivers, for instance. Um, so anything, any future development um, that will improve the vehicle uh, and improve the basic function that it fulfills. Those are the five different levels. Um, it is often a very um, popular uh, question in tests and exams where a case study is provided. Um, we've now used cars um, as, as, a, as, as, a, as a topic, but it could be applied to any product. We provide you with a case study and then say, um, explain the product that that particular case study uh, presents to you um, and identify all the different product levels for that particular, for that particular product. So it is a, it's an important component of the of the chapter, and it's actually um, it's actually interesting breaking it down um, on those different levels. Now we can also classify products. We can um, question yes, Dana. Uh, sorry, it's Mika, sir. I wanted to ask quickly okay, um, with regards to our exams. What is mm -hmm. The difference between like a formal test and an exam are they kind of similarly set up or um yeah i just want to kind of gauge what an exam would look like in uni versus the formal test that we've already had um they are similar in um, um they're mostly similar um layout um the split between the different types of questions, the different format um, formats of questions that you can expect. Um, your exam is not necessarily um, including more essay type questions or more case studies, for instance. The, the layout is pretty similar. Um, however, I think it is um, the, the, the most significant difference between the formal test that you that you did on Tuesday and the um, summative exam that you'll write in in, um, in June, end of June, um, is that it provides this opportunity to uh, assess you on the work that you have not been assessed on. Remember you when you complete your assignment and submit it, uh, and now the chapters that you have covered for your test, already provided us an opportunity to test you. It doesn't mean that there will not be work in those um, in, in the um, final exam um, from the first chapters that you've already written on, but obviously the, the, the bulk of the question, the majority of your questions for the exam would be from the chapters that you've not been assessed on. That's the great significance and difference between um, the test that you've written and the exam. Um, as to the, st um, the, the structure of the paper itself uh, and the, form, uh, the types of questions, it's going to be pretty similar. Um, I think also the, um, the um, we'll obviously reflect once all the, the tests have been marked and moderated, we'll obviously assess um, any changes that we need to make um, in the paper. Um, if it's um, 
a time-related issue, we'll have a look at that. But that's not something that um, that that goes through an um, academic process. Um, okay. We're more than one. Um, we yeah, we 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 many people sit in on and and contribute. Um, but um, no, it's it's not going to be totally different. Where your exam is not going to have any multiple choice questions or any true or false questions or any case study questions, and it's a total different. No, it's it's similar to what you're used to, um, and we're not going to um, we're not going to change that recipe. Okay, thank you, sir. And like, would you say it's similar mark allocation, like a hundred marks, or yes. would it be? Um, a I think so. Yes, I have. To, I've got. To, I, I did not set um, this paper, and I also didn't set the um, the um, exam paper. Um, that was done by a centurion um, um, lecturer, because we alternate every year. The previous year, I set all the papers, and this, then for this year, she set all the new papers. And next year, it's my turn again to set the paper. So, the, um, um, but again, I mean, if I don't set the paper, I'm, I'm moderating the paper. So I have to check. Um, I'm, I'm the first check to see if, if I'm happy with the content and the questions that was asked, uh, and if all the work were covered, um, and all the learning outcomes that we want to achieve from this particular module have um, have been covered in, in the paper. That's 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 what um, the moderators initial job is and then obviously to check afterwards if if um if the right processes were followed um the right processes were followed so, so i can mark your paper um because i haven't set the paper um but somebody else um moderates the paper um it would have been a lady who set up um the, set up the exam and the test in the first place but she's obviously not with with the company anymore so um but new new um lecturers have been allocated to to moderate the tests um the assignments and the exam Um, we will have more than enough time to do proper revision and preparation. Um, if you look at your schedule um, on Canvas, the, the module schedule, we have allowed time to do for that. And then obviously, um, unlike your, um, and that's the only other difference between the exams and the test, your exams will be done in an uninterrupted period where um, referring to the fact that you will not have classes in a study week a week prior to your exams and then obviously during the exam itself it's not where you now have to sit an exam sometime during the course of the day but you also have to attend lectures today no when, when it comes to the final exams that's um no other activities but the exam so you can just focus on that right next on the agenda is the classification of products now products are can be, and if in this particular case, um, because it's it's quite um, popular to use um, durability and usage as as, as variables. Um, where, if it's a durable product, it could be that it's um, of, if durability is a is, is a variable that is used. It could be that it's a, um, a non-durable product or a durable product. Where a non-durable product refers to um, items that you use and consume, and then it's finished, and you have to buy a new one, like the cool drinks and the toothpaste that I've used in this example. Once your toothpaste is finished, you go to the shop and you buy a new toothpaste. Okay, so it's consumed, um, and therefore it's not durable. It it, um, it runs out at some point, and you have to replace it. Um, more regularly than durable products. Durable products like television and fridges, yes, you also have to occasionally um, um, replace them. I had to replace a washing machine earlier this year and a fridge at the start of um, um, of this year. These things, well, but my, my previous fridge um, lasted me for 12 years. So those are more durable items that you do not have to buy on a continuous regular basis, but um, you have to replace them at some point. And if you don't, you are just very fortunate. Um, if we use the other variable um, usage as a classification variable, um, you have consumer and business um, um, products. A consumer product is a product that specifically is bought by the consumer to use. You buy a cool drink, you drink it because you're thirsty. You go to McDonald's, you buy a burger because you're hungry and you eat it. It's consumed, it's done. Where business products are used and bought by businesses to use um, in manufacturing processes to um, to make a different product. For instance, buying raw materials um, 
or like wheat from a farmer um, so you can actually use that in the process of baking your breads and your cakes so it is a classification um, or this particular classification is one that is that is popularly used um, obviously for us it's more important at this point to focus on consumer products and your consumer products can also be um, again like we've seen on previous slides be divided um, um, between products that we that um, we use for um, that we use regularly um, and to consume um, and we'll specifically look at the four different um, classifications of consumer products um, another very interesting question because it's relevant most of us can uh, relate to that let me just get um, one of the students admitted um, consumer products um, if we break consumer products up further consumer products are further classified also as convenience shopping speciality and unsought products um, I can actually okay let me run I'll go to the next slide because I'm um, the next slide I think in, in, in similar detail to this one um, relate to each of them individually so what do we qualify as a con um, a, a, as a convenient product a convenience product are products that we are very familiar with you find them in most shops um, you do not have to put a lot of effort into making a decision to purchase them um, they reasonably inexpensive um, and they're almost always readily available and in stock breads cool drinks milks chocolates those kind of consumables then you also have shopping products shopping products also similar to convenience products but they're slightly more expensive you don't always find them in all the shops um, you put a bit more effort into um, into the process of um, um, of um, comparing different options that's available before you decide buying bread and buying a tv is totally different buying furniture for your house and buying a cool drink because you're thirsty totally different the cool drink is a convenience product because you just want instant gratification um, you don't you probably go through maybe 10 seconds of, of decision making as to what flavor you're going to buy that's it however and, and you can find it anyway but compare that to another household good like a tv or a fridge for instance um, or furniture for that matter it, it takes it, it takes more time and you compare different options uh, you look at the, the, the different features that is offered um, and you choose the one that is um, most suited for your specific need so it's a, a slightly more um, 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 extended process um, before you make uh, um, a final decision then we have speciality products our speciality products are products that um, people are very familiar with um, they are expensive because of the familiarity customers are very loyal to these type of products um, it's usually um, only available in speciality shops like the example i've used earlier on um, of jewelry um, it's 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 um you're almost not almost reluctant to to compromise um, and replace these products with a substitute because um, of your loyalty to the particular um, brand um, based on your experience of the good quality the durable quality that this product has has, has provided you so you're definitely going to spend a lot of time um, to make a decision but you are more than likely going straight to the shop that you know you'll be able to find the speciality shop that you will find this product at okay and then you've got unsought products unsought products there can be two types of unsought products one of them is that you're completely unfamiliar with it it's a new product you you don't have um you've never bought it before because it was never available before so you never really had a need for it um that is a 
but that's one form of unsold product. And then other products, products that that we don't, we are not necessarily actively looking to purchase, like insurance, for instance, or um, a funeral plan. Um, if I ask you now, I mean, very few of you now um, have funeral plans. Why? Because I mean, you're 18, 19 years old. Um, you don't even think about that at the moment. Um, people later in their lives, totally different. But again, that's not something you necessarily go out and buy. A uh, fire extinguisher is another good example. You just don't go, that's not something that you specifically go out and buy um, or necessarily, I feel like that about ironing and ironing boards. I know, yes, your clothes need to be ironed and stuff, but I think, oh, wow, I mean, really? Um, you have to spend that amount of money on, on an ironing board? Um, um, there are certain items that you just, uh, you, yeah, you, you, you're reluctant to purchase. You're not necessarily looking to buy them, but you um, find that you at some point have to. Um, I never used to have a fire extinguisher in my home um, for many, many, many years. And then we went through an upgrade at our, at our campus um, and health and safety did the inspection and we had to replace many of the fire extinguishers. And, and I thought, you know what? It's probably a nice thing to have um, at least two items, um, uh, fire extinguishers in your home. Um, and obviously closer to the areas that you, the, 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 the danger areas, mostly the kitchen, for instance. Um, and yeah, now I have them, and I think um, it's not it's it's not something I would have I would have necessarily bought. Um, it's very often something that people buy after something has happened already, and then they realize, oh my goodness, it would have had a different outcome if if I actually had this item. But it's not something, and that's why it's unsorted, because you're not really looking for it. I mean, people are looking for, uh, do you, would you go out when it's Black Friday, spe and, and there's Black Friday specials on, and say, so right, today I'm actually shopping for a fire extinguisher. No, people are going for electronics and TVs and these kind of things. Okay, so it's not something that you necessarily are going to be looking for. Right. Let's differentiate also between um, these following things about products that um, is, is, is also necessary to, um, to highlight. The product item is actually the product itself. In this particular case, I've used the example of a razor. So that's Gillette, that's the, the Gillette sensor. That's the one that you see on the image at the front. That's the product. The product line is closely related items to that particular product. In the image right at the bottom, um, right, you see that there's shaving creams, there's lotions, um, and um, products that you need to ensure that um, the other product works, or that you would buy because um, um, yeah, because you needed to, to to for that particular product to function properly. Okay, so. Product item is the individual product. Product line is all the products that's closely related to that. And often, like I'm um, buying uh, this morning, I was um, I was very irritated because my my wireless um, mouse that I use um, didn't want to work. So I knew immediately there's only one thing because it worked last night. Uh, I needed to um, change the battery. And now obviously. Um, not all of us are in the habit of having spare pen lights and all different shapes and sizes of batteries lying around in the house. So when I have to, um, after work today, one of the things on my shopping list, I will have to buy new pen lights for my mouse so I can use it, um, the wireless mouse. That's something that, um, that I need that's related and very often um, related to that particular product and its functionality. Your product mix is slightly wider. Product mix, in the case of Gillette, is Gillette the, uh, um, probably well known, um, mostly known for, for razors and shaving creams and stuff like that. But they have additional um, products in the um, toilet uh, toiletries range as well. Some of you, the smokers, would know that they have lighters as well. Uh, those of you who have kids would know that paper made pens, for instance, are also products that is in the Gillette range of products that um, that is available. Okay, making up the mix. It's basically it's, it's a mix. It's a mixture of all the products that's related to um, um, that particular company or firm. 
The length of the product um, line is obviously the number of variants that you have in your product line. Um, take us back to number two in Gillette's case. And I think let's also have, um, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's on the next page, on the next slide. I have a visual of, of, of um, Gillette's product range. Um, the width of the product mix um, is the number of product lines that you have within um, your particular mix. Right, let me just go to that slide. I think that slide is, yeah, there we have it. Um, we've pretty much addressed it through the images and the discussion of the previous slide, but you will find it in chapter eight in your, in your textbooks, um, table 8.1, um, just again, complementing what we've said already about um, all the products that is available and basically putting the whip. In other words, how many lines of products do you have? They have razors, they have toiletries, they've got writing and they've got lighters. Those are the different lines. The length of the product line determines how many products in each of these lines. Okay, just to put product lines or width of the product mix and the length of the product um, lines in um, context this nice illustration right and we look at my clock um, I'll honor my agreement with you and for those who um, are dependent on lifts and other commitments um, I think let's finish at 12. I think let's just finish with branding okay not brandy branding Okay, for those who are already in a weekend mood. Right, branding. Branding is a very, very interesting subject. Um, I actually love the topic of branding a lot. Um, it, it's so familiar, we are so familiar with, 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 with it, but it's also very interesting because um, every, um, <laughs> oh, Mm, some of you are identifying yourself as users of a particular brands. Now that we're talking about brands. Um, brand basically is the name, the term, the symbol, the design, and a combination of all of that that identifies um, your product and differentiates it from the competitors. If you see three stripes, it's you know it's added us and then you see the switch of Nike, you distinctly know the difference. It's two different brands, it's recognizable brands. When you see the M of McDonald's and you compare that to um, KFC and, and Colonel, Colonel Sanders' face, then those are different, those are um, um, items that um, in this case um, is the, it's referred to as the brand mark because it's the symbol that is used to um, identify a particular, um, a particular product or um, company or brand, um, range of products. The brand name is exactly what it says. That's the evolution of Nike over years. Nike, um, when they originated in the early 60s, I think, um, that was the logo that they've used. Then it, I, I, this became familiar to me, the second um, of the four in that range of images. That's the one I got used to because Nike, up to that point, didn't use any, um, didn't use their, um, their logo, that particular symbol with the shoes, separately. It was Nike and the swoosh, or the tick, whatever you want to call it. And it was always on a, a light background. Never used to use it on a darker background. And then it changed later on, and um, you'll see that um, that's the next um, image that's available. And nowadays we, we see that the swoosh, and we know psh, that's Nike. Nike expensive compared to other products um, or similar products. Shoes, exercising apparel, or not? Are they well priced? Are they good quality?
you guys are not brand conscious at all. As long as it is, if long, as long as it's functional. Right. Let me show you some interesting facts about Nike that you probably didn't know. Nike was founded by, um, 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 I think Mike Phillips was the one guy, um, and um, also um, Bill Bo Bowerman, um, way back in 1964. And it was actually initially known as Blue Ribbon Sports. And Blue Ribbon Sports, for those who are uh, into um, running shoe brands, um, was actually the distributor for the Japanese shoemaker, um, Onitsuka Tiger, and nowadays it's actually known as ASICS. Uh, they only became known as Nike from 1971 onwards. So, very interesting that, um, yeah, that um, Nike actually almost acted as a distributor for ASICS way back in 1964. Um, I think maybe known to some people um, is the origin of the slogan um, and everybody knows the Nike slogan um, it was made popular when they brought in celebrities to use uh, or when they endorsed celebrities um, um, and um, they used it very successfully in um, so almost for three four decades now um, that particular slogan just do it we all know that the Nike slogan is just do it that's probably one of the most well-known slogans of, of any business and I think if we have 10 I did an exercise for the students now I'm going to do that exercise for you next week so I'm not going to spoil the fun let's not get ahead of ourselves um, it was inspired the just do it slogan was inspired by um, a serial killer Gary Gilmore he was on death row for um, having murdered two people and um, his last words actually before his execution was let's do it and that was taken as an inspiration and later modified by um, um, by Nike, um, and hence the one that we know um, that is most popular um, to us all, and that's the "Just Do It" slogan. The Nike swoosh, that a little tick, was designed by a university student, a graphic design student. And a couple of attempts, they didn't like um, some of her original designs, but then they bought this particular design from her for $35. She was later on compensated quite well, um, and I think she um, she was remunerated quite well um, later on in her life. I think in excess of, I think she got more than 600,000 US dollars um, as, as sort of in the form of shares, Nike shares. And then, um, just to put everything into context, the swish, that tick, the recognizable um, um, brand mark that cost $35 is currently worth $26 billion US dollars. That's the current brand logo, a value of the brand logo. That is more than double what the um, revenue was last year so don't confuse the money that and the revenue that um that that, that nike has turned um that just depends on how much they've sold in a particular um financial year the logo itself the brand the value of the logo is 26 26 um million uh, 26 billion us dollars that's a significant um, increase from from where they started. The first Nike shoe, believe it or not, was made inside a waffle iron. Um, the founder, Bill Bowerman, was actually having breakfast with one. He was he was battling the whole time because he was trying to find um, a replacement for running shoes, a replacement for running shoes, um, the spikes, because the spikes. Uh, um, it's it's not easy to to transport um, because they shop. Um, they can actually hurt you. People have cut themselves with it. Um, they've cut other athletes with it. Um, so he's looking at something that um, will give you similar traction, 
um, on the soles of your running shoes, um, but without spikes. And when he was having breakfast this morning with his family, and so they were making waffles, he saw the texture of um, of the of the waffles, and he started using it. He used um, urethane, obviously, and killed in the process quite a number of waffle machines. Um, but that's where everything started, um, believe it or not. It was also named after the Greek goddess of victory. Um, every time they, the soldiers won a particular battle, they cry, um, the victory cry was um, that of Nike, Nike, Nike. They shot it after every victory um, because um, it was in respect of um, the Greek goddess of victory. And then um, probably one of the most well-known um, Nike products was the Nike Air Max the first time it came out in 1987 and they had the Beatles compose a song for them and they used that in the Air Max commercial and I, probably one of the um, most well-known songs by the Beatles is Hey Jude even for people who um, um, never knew the Beatles they probably know the song um, or know of the Beatles it was actually a, a flip side, a V side um, um, single. Um, that particular song, Revolution, that they used in the Nike ad. Currently, the brand value of Nike, um, updated end of 2020, is 34.8 billion US dollars. And that's rather significant. That's a reasonably successful business. And if we um, if we compare brands and the value of different brands, um, that's something that um, I think I can do with you next week. Um, we can do it on Monday. Uh, look at different brands and where they are positioned and, and, and how they are successful, recognizable, and then see how many of those brands we actually know the slogans of. Um, it's interesting to see the top 10. I've had a look at the top 10 again um, um, yesterday. I mean, it's interesting which brand you'll find um, as A, most recognizable, and B, um, the greatest um, brand value. Uh, very interesting fact. But anyway, I think at, at, at this particular, um, on, on this particular subject, um, let's rather not start something new or start in the middle of something or start and then finish in the middle of something. Um, I think if nobody has any questions, um, do you have any questions about your assignments? Um, are you still okay with it? Do you want me to spend some time with you to um, just maybe prepare you to um, um, the, the submission process of an assignment? So you, um, because you obviously um, you want to do it correctly the first time. Um, do you want me to spend some time um, in the near future before submission, obviously, um, on, on on assignments and how to complete the assignments and upload the assignment? Or are you guys all right with that? Yes, so we already uploaded one assignment. Right, so you've been um, through the process already, Matthew, with with um, with another module. So you you find um, you're quite okay with it. Yes, sir. But like like people are saying in the chat, it will probably it will probably be beneficial if we go through the game. Of course. Maybe just um, at the end of a session, just spend five minutes just to check and see if everybody's on the same page or anything that you have any problems with, um, with the assignment itself. Okay, then also we can we can discuss that. But um, keep me in the loop, um, mail me or um, interrupt the session or share or um, drop a message in the text, um, in, in the chat box and um, I can respond to that. Okay. Margaliso, yes, thank you very much. Um, I'll, I'll I'll make sure that we we go through that process. I think um, just to make sure that um, everybody is um, um, that everybody has similar information and that um, that um, the process runs smoothly. Okay, there's nothing that you that that, that is more anxious than you knowing. Um, have have it been submitted, and what do I do if it says that um, your submission has got not gone through and stuff like that? So. Okay, let's spend some time on that. Right, any questions, anybody at this stage? Um, go find some new brands out there for us, and then we can discuss it next week. Um, but uh, if everything goes well, um, we'll chat again next uh, next Thursday. Are you all good?
Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Have a good weekend, and um, like I always say, stay safe, enjoy yourself, and do the three most important things that we um, have become used to doing, um, and hopefully you have not been reluctant to doing, and that is to keep us um, your, your social distance, sanitize, and wear your mask, please. Um, we all want, we all in this together, but we all want to um, um, solve the issues related to the pandemic jointly as well. But thank you very much. Um, I'll stay online for another minute or so after the session. If there's anybody that has um, questions that they want to ask me outside of the recorded session. OK, okay well, um, let me get to uh, the marking of your tests. Thanks very much. Enjoy your weekend. Right, sir. It's a pleasure.